All right, guys, welcome back to TMJ Show. Today, we are going to be answering a question that's probably going to be one of my favorite episodes to do. It's going to be a really quick answer, but it's so important because I was doing this completely wrong in medical school, and I see this from all the medical students that I work with. And in hindsight, I was like, that was so stupid of you, Laksh. So I'm going to talk to the inner Laksh in you and hope that you don't continue to make this mistake because you are missing out on so much potential and so much progress as a medical student, as a future physician. And to a point, I still do this today. So making this video reminds me that next time I see a patient, next time I care for somebody, next time I deal with the situation, not to make the same mistake I'm currently doing that you likely are doing. So let's get into today's episode. So today's question is going to be a fun one because it actually relates to an old video, but this comes from a medical student who's asked to be anonymous that is studying internationally and basically asking the question of the two types of medical students that I talked about in an old video of mine on kind of my day as a cardiologist or my day on my cardiology rotation. And so I'll link that up like up here if you guys are watching on YouTube or on the podcast, but basically I refer to two different types of students, student A and student B. Student A is somebody who is definitely designed on learning the information to become a better physician themselves with the understanding that they're gonna make some mistakes on the way. Student B is somebody who is definitely, I used to be more like, which is somebody who doesn't like to make mistakes outwardly. And so there's always a reserved potential that they never reach because they're just too afraid of wondering what other people think of them. And so the question today is how can you increase your confidence to become more like student A and less like student B? And really this becomes an exercise of practice. And I love this question so much because I learned the hard way that being student B really limits the potential and impressiveness that you can give upon other people because where we all learn and we know this internally we just don't do it in practice where we all learn as physicians as people on the medical field is through mistakes and the best time to learn that is as a student as a trainee and not when you're like an attending which is where I'm about to be in a year as the making of this episode where no one is watching over you you don't want to make mistakes when there's no other form of supervision or somebody to like catch you essentially when you're a medical student it's a little silly to say I don't want to make a mistake because I know it's going to cost me an evaluation, but the more important thing it's going to cost you is the lack of chance to remember that information long term. So often when I was in medical school on my rotations, I would just not answer questions because I just don't feel comfortable with whether I knew the answer or not. And then if I knew the answer, you would do like the stupid like, yeah, like as if you were trying to show confidence that you knew it. And I was like, this is the most stupidest thing ever, Lux. And on the other end, there would be times where I would not know the answer and to a question, I would just look away, like just do this like awkward thing as if I would just like act like I was on my phone or working. And I missed out on answering a question where if I said something with confidence, and even if it was wrong, I'd be like, ah, oh, like you clearly didn't understand that piece of information. If you understand one, the gravity that comes from being student B and understanding how much you miss out of being that great future physician you wanna be, sometimes that's motivation enough to like make a few attempts here and there at increasing your confidence. And two, what you have and realize is that when you answer questions to become more confident and just to improve your knowledge, that confidence comes because you realize no one cares if you miss things wrong. The last thing actually that I'm expecting of the medical students I work with is that they know the answer to every question that I ask them. Mainly I'm asking them questions that I consider to be important. So then if they either don't know it because they answered it incorrectly or they don't know it because they tell me so, that is a great jumping point for me to say, oh, here is a place where I can instill the knowledge that I've gained over the years to help them. And that is really where you should expect your instructors, your attendings, your residents to be trying to give you and less so of like, oh, are they evaluating me when I answer this question? Yeah, there's gonna be people who are going to, but most of us are trying to teach you because we wanna understand what you are. So if you don't give enough opportunities to answer questions and say things with confidence, even if you're blatantly wrong, then you're missing out on that potential of what student you become. Again, if you imagine the position you can be and there's a hundred things you can get wrong, so a hundred things in the future you can now know the right answer to. If you don't answer those questions, then it's going to be limiting you to the future potential of what kind of doctor you could be. So to increase your confidence, step number one is to understand you're missing out if you don't. And step number two is understanding that it's not that big of a deal of getting things wrong. If anything, it tells us where we can help you. And two, no one really remembers your wrong answers. Now, if you get everything wrong, that means you're not listening, you're not thinking hard enough, but I'm gonna expect that the majority of students are critically thinking, are gonna have some right answers, are gonna have some wrong answers, but the more you're okay with asking things without the desire to impress, desire to like look good all the time, the better you're gonna be long term because you are going to always look at things as an opportunity to learn. And so if there's going to be times, even as a third year resident, where I'm gonna be like, I don't actually understand that. Like, could you explain that to me? And that is great because my attendings will say, oh, perfect, like Lux doesn't know this. Like, let me instill that knowledge in him without feeling like, oh, that's like stupid for a third year resident to not know that. I don't think that way anymore, but it did think that way as a medical student. So don't worry too much about the evaluation. Remember, we care more about students being interested and learning and improving and progressing. And you start to do that when you make more mistakes, when you answer 
answer questions confidently, when you ask questions when things aren't clear to you, because again, you take away that knowledge long term because you can essentially think of them as like micro corrections. And then two, we start to think you as a student who is really trying to improve their knowledge base over time versus somebody who's just reserved and answering questions as needed. So be okay making those mistakes. Create a list if you need to of the topics that you're struggling with. So even if your attendings, your residents don't fill those gaps in, if you learn something, if you heard something on rotations or with your patients, you're like, I have no idea what this acronym means. I have no idea what we're doing this form of treatment. You can read about it. That is a simple way of feeling initially like you're stupid and then filling in the gaps later. And if something still doesn't make sense, you'd be like, hey, I was reading about this treatment that we were giving this patient. Could you explain why we didn't do this versus that? And that is a great jumping point because sometimes one, it'll tell people that, oh, okay, like you clearly are interested in knowing little nuances. And then two, maybe you missed out on something or maybe you brought up a great point and then that can really dictate patient care. So be okay of looking silly in the moment because one, we don't remember. Two, we take that as an opportunity to teach you. And three, we just like those students more. Um, obviously there's going to be some residents that just hate answering questions regardless, but I will act like most of them are on your side and we all have been there. So be confident at being like you're not always going to show confidence. The more and more you do that, the more you're going to start to progress. So hopefully that helped. All right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and learning how to become more like student A, the student who is designed more around improving their personal progress and knowledge base versus about worrying about what people think of them. Now, I know this advice and this process really is more of a easier said than done, but sometimes just understanding the approach will help you make those small micro decisions and assessments on how to get there. So hopefully you guys can become more and more like student A, because I promise you there's one thing that I definitely struggled with when I was in medical school is being too afraid of being wrong and it definitely held me back. So try not to make the same mistake yourself. But with that being said, guys, if you have more questions like this one, if you want more personalized answers like this, then you can click on a Q&A link either on YouTube or on podcast and basically fill out your information and I'll send you a personalized answer just like this one. And also we'll try to make it for the general public as well. If you guys have any feedbacks or small comments, or if you just enjoyed the episode, then go ahead and add it into your comment section down below at YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, then consider hitting that like and subscribe button as well as that notification bell to be notified when new episodes go out. And if you enjoy this step-by-step -step personalized answer and you want kind of more help on your own medical journey, definitely consider checking out the Medic Night program. It is a step-by-step -step program that we do over the span of several weeks to help you on your biggest struggles on your medical journey. For most students, that is how to improve their grades without spending more hours, if anything, spending less. If you want to see some of the results that our past students have gotten, just check out the link down below. It is application-based only, but if we think we can help you, we'll definitely reach out. So if you guys are interested, that will be linked down below. And if you're more interested in a DIY, kind of do it at your own pace, then definitely check out some of the other programs that we have down below for you, depending on where in your journey you want help. The most popular one that we have by far at the MD Journey is both the Med School Domination Bundle as well as Level Up Your Studying, which I'll link down below for more information. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for making it to the very end of the episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, then check out this video right here on how you can use Anki like a pro, as well as this video right here on how I cut my time in half in medical school. But as always, my friends, thank you for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.